I've been doing some thinking out loud, as I have said, about what it means to be Anglican. And we've talked a little bit about what it means to be Anglican in terms of what we believe and how we worship. But the third thing that kind of completes this, and at least in my mind, is how we govern ourselves, how we organize our common life together. And one of the things that is uh, true about Anglicans, and that is not true about some other Protestant denominations, is that we have retained the, those orders of clergy that we see written in the New Testament of bishops, priests, and deacons. That's part of our ordered life together. In fact, ordination means exactly that, ordered, things that are ordered together. So the structure of bishops, priests, and deacons is part of our ordered life together, how we order ourselves in terms of the clergy. But the church as a whole is led by the clergy, but governed by the councils of the church. Um, and that, this is true on every level of the church. On the local level, it is led by clergy, by, usually by a priest. Um, sometimes there are cases where there's a deacon in charge, but normally led by, led by a priest, but governed by a vestry or a parish council, which is the voice of the lay people in, in the middle of the life and the organization of the church. On a diocesan level, which of course a diocese is a collection of churches or a collection of parishes together, um, it is led by a bishop and um, it is overseen by convention or synod. Another word for that in our Anglican uh, usage is synod, the gathering together of the clergy and the laity. And even indeed on our provincial level, it's led by an archbishop and there is a provincial council uh, within the context of the ACNA. And that's the picture of our governance across the board, led by clergy, governed by council. And what this fundamentally means is as we gather together as a church, the leadership comes from the clergy, but uh, voice and vote is given together with clergy and laity uh, for decisions in the common life of the church. What, what affects everyone should be decided by everyone. So, for example, when the church elects a new bishop, uh, everybody comes together, the clergy and the laity, uh, to make a decision, to discern that decision and vote together. Uh, that's true about um, what a vestry does. As a vestry gathers um, month by month, usually in a parish, they are meeting with the pastor, with the rector, uh, with the priest who is there to make some decisions for the life of the church together. And then, of course, the church as a whole, on an annual basis, comes together, again, led by the clergy to make decisions about what's coming in the, to go, certainly I hope to give thanks for what's happened in the previous year, but certainly make decisions about what's coming in the next year. That's our kind of picture of governance that holds together that kind of clergy perspective, the leadership and the value of the clergy about the bishops, priests, and deacons, but also the voice and the participation of the laity in the common life, our common life together. That's how we govern ourselves, it, the, these things together. And it's, it's both of those things together that brings our common life in terms of governance um, and makes it kind of specifically Anglican. So these three major things that make us Anglican, you know, what we believe, how we worship, and certainly how we are governed, um, led by clergy and governed by council.